is a sight to see. Tuning in on Toronto, Blue Jay observers visualize a pennant, and on closer examination, it's not an optical illusion. Checking out Los Angeles, the Dodgers are headed toward a view from the top, and a survey of the scene shows they are the first team to peak. Stargazing in Kansas City, the Royals display one to watch as they go eyeball to eyeball with the Angels for a look at first place. Seek and ye shall find. Big league relievers scrutinize the situation from afar and then move in to stare down opponents. So get ready to witness it all on This Week in Baseball. This Week in Baseball is brought to you by Old Spice Aftershave and Cologne. Splash on the feeling. Splash on Old Spice. All you gotta do is smell the coffee. Splash on Old Spice. Now you're moving. Dodgers wrap up the West. The Dodgers were looking fine and sitting pretty as they rolled to a division crown. First team to do so. Horrell Hershiser won the clincher against Atlanta for a record of 19 and 3, including 11 wins and no losses at Dodger Stadium this year. When the season began, few people thought Los Angeles could win the West, but the Dodgers rebounded from a slow start to capture their third division title in five years. They set the stage by going 18 and 12 in September with a lot of muscle from Mike Marshall who hammered nine homers in the month and had a season total of 27. Pedro Guerrero closed out September with home run number 33, tying him with Steve Garvey for most homers by a Los Angeles Dodger in one season. Los Angeles kept opponents off base for the league's top pitching staff. Bob Welch collected four wins in September to go 13 and four. Since his June return from elbow problems, Welch has found his groove, as well as a split-fingered fastball. It's something that Perry and I have been working on, and uh, it's been a great pitch for me. It's a good pitch against left-handers. If I can take my time, you know, and pick up Socia and drive towards the plate and uh, not open my front shoulder, I'll get the ball down a little bit better. All the Dodgers kept getting better as the season progressed. On June 1st, they were below 500 and in fourth place. But after that, they compiled the best record in the majors and were 30 games above 500 when they clinched. Now to St. Louis, where New York planned to match the cards ace for ace. Bush Stadium was rocking when the Mets came to town, trailing the first place Cardinals by three games. John Tudor, unbeaten since mid-July. And in the opener, the Mets found out why. Tudor gave up only six hits and held New York scoreless through ten innings. But Met counterpart Ron Darling was just as effective, allowing a mere four hits as he shut out St. Louis through nine. And so it was that the scoreboard showed all goose eggs. That is, until Darryl Strawberry came to bat in the top of the 11th. Oh, baby, that one is way out of here. The Mets lead it one to nothing in the 11th inning as Darryl Strawberry crushes one. Jesse Orozco came on to pick up the win, and the Mets took game two the next night as Dwight Gooden won number 24 by beating Joaquin Andahar to draw the Mets within one game of St. Louis in the East. Time now to feature a Cincinnati kid who seems bound for glory. 25-year-old Tom Browning of the Reds has struck gold in his rookie season. With 11 straight wins and an overall record of 20 and 9, he's the first Major League rookie to win 20 games since Bob Grimm did it for the New York Yankees in 1954. Not only that, but Browning is Cincinnati's first 20-game winner since 1970. Came off the field today, I had you know, a few tears in my eyes because I didn't realize, you know, it really hadn't sunken in yet. But, you know, it's nice being able to win, and 20's over with now, and I'm going to go out there and look for number 21. 
Browning was a surprise reason why Cincinnati surprised almost everybody by posting a strong challenge in the West. And he credits much of his success to all-around support from his teammates. They played some great ball behind me, and, uh, you know, I had a few bad outings where we just happened to score more runs than the other team. So, you know, I've, I've had a little bit of luck this year. But, you know, mostly I've been fairly consistent every time I went out there. I've gone six or seven innings, you know, fairly strong innings, and we just happened to be able to shut them down. And, you know, I'm very proud to be part of this team, and I'm just glad that I, you know, I was able to contribute as much as I have this year. Browning's super season makes him a serious candidate for League Rookie of the Year honors, but he's got heavy opposition from St. Louis sensation Vince Coleman, who leads the majors with 109 stolen bases. He's having such an outstanding year in there in first place, and you know he's one of the main reasons that's there because he's such a good base stealer. He gets on base and he gets in that extra base, so he's well deserving of the award. You know he's done a great job in taking that team where it's at now, and you know they have a, a rookie pitcher of the year, so you know I guess one deserves one and another guy deserves the other. So you know I'm just going to take it if they give it to me, fine. If they don't, well, you know it's all right with me. Well, either way, the Reds are looking toward a rosy future with Tom Browning on the mound. Let's open the notebook for this week in baseball's TWIB notes from around the National League. New York Met Gary Carter capped off a sensational September by smacking a two-run 10th inning homer to beat Pittsburgh. For the month, Carter had 34 RBIs, a 343 batting average, and a team record tying 13 home runs. With a 21 and 11 mark, Joaquin Andahar is one of two Cardinals with at least 20 wins this season. The other, John Tudor, with a record of 20 and 8. The last time a National League team boasted two 20-game winners in the same year was 1969, a year in which that distinction was claimed by two teams. Chicago's Ferguson Jenkins posted a 21 and 15 record for the second-place Cubs, and teammate Bill Hands was 20 and 15. Also in 1969, Bill Singer of Los Angeles won exactly 20 games, as did teammate Claude Osteen. Now it's time for this week's quiz, brought to you by Nissan, builders of high-quality cars and trucks for over 50 years. St. Louis has been running wild all season, and when shortstop Ozzie Smith stole two bases in one game, it gave the Cards five players with at least 30 steals. The others are Vince Coleman with 109, outfield teammates Willie McGee with 55, and Andy Van Slyke with 34, and second base. Baseman Tommy Herr with 31. But one team in big league history had six players with at least 30. And for this week's quiz, name that West Coast team. Stay tuned. Every now and then you'll come across a road like this. That's when more than ever you'll want a car like this. The Nissan 300ZX Turbo. You flick the adjustable suspension to firm and go for it. With three liters worth of fuel-injected muscle under you, it's your road now. And the feeling, like the car, is awesome. For high-performance sports cars like the 300ZX, the name is Nissan. Rollades know. On this assembly line, the crew gets heartburn. And when they do, they can't stop. No wonder millions take Rolaids. Rolaids antacid medicine consumes 100% of the acid required to give millions 100% relief. With Rolaids, you can keep going. Now there's also new sodium-free Rolaids. Sodium-free and rich in calcium, a new source of calcium for women. New sodium-free Rolaids or regular Rolaids for 100% relief. Starburst fruit juice. City, a test for best in the West. Holding a one-game lead over the Royals, California hoped to focus on a division crown in a showdown at Kansas City. But George Brett stole the show in the fourth inning of game one, blasting a home run to tie the score at one all. A packed house at Royal Stadium. And still more to cheer about three innings later when Jim Sunberg got a power pulse with the game still tied. Going, going, that ball is gone. And Kansas City was ahead to stay. 
The Royals added another run next inning, but that was more than Brett Saberhagen needed. He went the distance on a five hitter, striking out 10, and he pulled Kansas City back into a first place tie. That gave 21-year-old Saberhagen a record of 20 and six, making him the fifth youngest pitcher in Major League history to become a 20-game winner. But Mike Witt put a damper on KC Spirits in game two. Despite a sore arm, Witt held the Royals to two runs through seven and the third innings. Also shining brightly was reliever Donnie Moore who finished off Kansas City with an inning and a third of no-hit ball for save number 30 as California regained a one-game lead. But the Royals won game three to force yet another tie at the top as they pursued their second straight Western Division title. Next stop, Toronto, where the Blue Jays moved closer to clinching the East. Riding high and mighty, Toronto is buzzing with a full-blown case of pennant fever. A normally sedate city all set to celebrate. Following the team has become Toronto's number one pastime. In only their ninth year, the Jays have captured the city's hearts and minds. The first few years, uh, there were a lot of fans who uh, were just attracted by the fact that it was uh, a major league label. And the first few seasons, it was it was a little frustrating, and you couldn't get the people to react the way baseball fans normally do. But uh, that's gradually changing, and now they're tremendously enthusiastic, and uh, they're standing up and cheering when the pitcher has two strikes on the batter, the way they do in other stadiums. And uh, baseball is the number one topic now. Minor league ball came to this town a century ago. Last year's World Series skippers Dick Williams and Sparky Anderson once managed here. And Babe Ruth hit his first professional home run in Toronto. There is no question that baseball is the American pastime. We, we don't, we don't uh, challenge that in any way, shape, or form. But baseball has come on. It always has been a great sport up here. If you want to talk specifically Toronto, you can't go anywhere. You can't ride on a streetcar. You can't take a cab. You, you can't walk into a, an, a, into a shopping store, a department store, or a bar, and people are talking Blue Jays, Blue Jays, Blue Jays. Unfortunately, right now for the Toronto Maple Leaf Hockey Club, you don't even hear about them. So everyone right now is just behind the Blue Jays. It's absolutely incredible. Pat Gillick and Paul Beeson have done an outstanding job in promoting this team. This team is the best run sports franchise probably anywhere in North America, in Canada for sure. They've done an outstanding job. They've knocked everybody off the sport pages. 1985 is truly their year. You can almost feel it in your bones that it's going to happen. Blue Jay backers have helped make it happen, demonstrating their devotion with a team record turnout of more than two million this year. They've re-established companionship and winning, <laughs> winning. Oh, I think it's going to be Jays all the way. Jays all the way. Billy Martin doesn't have a chance. I like him, but the Blue Jays, they got it. World Series. Thank you. And thanks to the team's hard-earned success, playing ball for the Blue Jays is a real blast. Every day is a beautiful day to come to the ballpark. We play a lot of cards, have a lot of fun before. You know, we're supposed to be at 11.30. We've got guys here at 8.30 in the morning, you know, with donuts and, and coffee. It's a different opportunity right now as opposed to in the past. When you're playing before a lot of people and they're cheering you on, it means a whole lot to a ball player psychologically. And we've had nothing but great support here in the four years I've been here. And those fans are just super. This town has really gotten behind baseball. They're really excited. They know that... Uh, this could be the year for the Blue Jays, and they've been very patient and very understanding, and uh, now they're enjoying some of the success the ball club's having. And hoping the summer's prosperity turns into October glory. Now, let's review this week in baseball's twib notes from around the American League. Minnesota's Burt Blylevin went all the way to beat Chicago, giving him a league-leading 23 complete games. With a record of 16 and 16, Bly Levin also leads the league in strikeouts, innings pitched, starts, and shutouts. And by the way, Captain Bly's 176 American League wins are the most among all active pitchers. For Baltimore manager Earl Weaver, it was an all-too-familiar tale of frustration followed by ejection. 
It all started in the opening game of a doubleheader sweep by the Yankees when a frustrated Weaver argued with the umpires twice in the first two innings, but when he came out a third time, crew chief Jim Evans ejected him. Then Oriole acting manager Cal Ripken Sr. got into an argument and he was ejected. Want more? Well, so did Earl, who tried to continue the discussion before the nightcap. But as soon as Weaver said, I beg to differ, he was given the heave-ho again. Oakland's Jose Conseco has been A's plus since being called up to the majors last month. His report card during an 11-game stretch shows four homers, 10 RBIs, and a 463 batting average. Not a total surprise, however, because before his promotion, Conseco combined for 35 homers and 122 RBIs at the double and triple A level this year. And now let's get a level on the answer to this week's Nissan quiz. The 1976 Oakland A's were the only team ever to have six players with at least 30 steals in the same season. In fact, Billy North was one of three A's to swipe more than 50 that year. North had 75 to lead the team. Bert Campanaris was second with 54, and current Yankee Don Baylor ran up 52. The other three with at least 30 were Phil Garner, Claudel Washington, and Larry Lentz. In all, Oakland had a modern-day record 341 steals that year. New Old Spice Solid keeps guys so much drier, they just might give up their men in antiperspirant mid-stick. Hey, Bronco. Here's a present. Hardly used. New Old Spice Solid keeps you drier. Compared to men in New Old Spice keeps you 35% drier. So you may want to switch mid-stick. Norman, from me to you. Practically brand new. Why wait to be drier? Get New Old Spice Solid antiperspirant now. Take my men in, please. Una lezione sul formaggio italiano dalla Forsini. In Italia il formaggio romano è robusto, ma il formaggio parmigiano è delicato. Il parmigiano è per l'insalata, le fettuccine al freddo, è delicato. Ma il romano è per ravioli, minestrone, spaghetti marinara, è robusto. Capisce? Parmigiano è delicato, romano è robusto e forsì è perfetto. You can get your life under control. Buy Dianetics today, wherever paperbacks are sold. It's Crazy Eddie's greatest TV and video sale ever. Get anything and everything in TV and video. Crazy Eddie's greatest TV and video sale ever. It's going to be insane. It could be history in the making when Phil Necro takes his last shot this year at win number 300. It's the Yanks and the Blue Jays, Sunday at 1.30. Hey fans, it's baseball madness time. So let's get down to the scene of the crime. Amid shouts of Olay that sound so sublime, sometimes big leaguers just nickel and dime. What have we here? Hocus pocus, it's perfectly clear. Abracadabra, watch and see. A new hidden ball trick. <laughs> well, I'll be. But don't go away, just keep your seats, because we've got more mysterious treats. Baseball's hard to beat, and sometimes I tell you it'll knock you right off your feet. Now let's sample a menu of defensive delicacies served up by artful chefs with a handle on the hot stuff. First up, San Diego's Gary Templeton, St. Louis Cardinal Terry Pendleton. 
Montreal Expo, Hubie Brooks. A Houston Tucson, Bill Doran to Glenn Davis. Another Expo, Vance Law. Toronto Blue Jay, Rance Mullinex. Philadelphia's Mike Schmidt. Pittsburgh Pirate, R.J. Reynolds. Seattle Mariner, Phil Bradley. The Pirates again with Joe Orsabat. Boston's Glenn Hoffman. A Detroit duo of Darrell Evans to Bill Sherr. Chicago White Sox, Greg Walker to Dan Spillner. Chicago Cub, Sean Dunstan. And finally, New York Yankee, Rex Hudler. From great plays to great finishers. You know, no team is complete without a stopper who can slam the door on the opposition. The bullpen may not be the best seat in the house, but it's often the most important seat in the late innings of a close game. Because when a skipper dials R for relief, he's got only one thing on his mind, save the day. The Roll Age Relief Awards are presented to relievers who prove toughest in the clutch. Now, as the season draws to a close, let's check out the top contenders. In the National League, Chicago's Lee Smith is leading a tight race. With 32 saves and 41 opportunities, Smith is the first reliever in Cub history to record back-to-back -back seasons of at least 30 saves. And he's also collected seven wins this year. In Montreal, they call Jeff Reardon the Terminator. Leading the league with 38 saves, Reardon is also one of only five active relievers with 20 or more saves in each of the last four seasons. Now to the American League, where Kansas City's Dan Quisenberry tops the list of contenders. Quiz has recorded more saves than any other pitcher over the last six seasons. And with 35 this year, he has a chance to become the first reliever to win the award five times. New York's Dave Rigetti moved to the bullpen last season and saved 31 games. This year, 12 wins and 27 saves. Bob James came to Chicago from Montreal and provided a big boost to the White Sox bullpen with 30 saves and 9 wins. Oakland's Jay Howell has been a savior after coming over from the Yankees. 9 wins and 29 saves and 34 chances. In the team category, it's all but certain that this year's top honors will go to the bolstered Blue Jay bullpen. Toronto's Relief Corps is a five-man crew led by a flock of young arms like Tom Henke, who has 13 saves and an ERA below two. Overall, with 13 more saves than last year, the Blue Jay bullpen has made some kind of turnaround, playing a major role in the team's success story this season. And now it's time for an Old Spice salute. Brought to you by 24 hours strong Old Spice deodorant and antiperspirant. This week, Old Spice salutes New York Yankee Ricky Henderson, who raced to run number 144 this year. Most in the American League since Boston's Ted Williams scored 150 in 1949. What's more, with 78 steals, Henderson shattered the Yankees' 71 year old stolen base mark. Still not through. With 23 home runs, he's the only player in league history with at least 20 homers and 75 steals in the same season. No American leaguer had ever hit 20 homers and stolen even 50 bases in one year. Congratulations, Ricky. That's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball. Tomorrow night at 8, Jackie Gleason, Art Carney, Audrey Meadows, and Joyce Randolph share great memories and moments from the lost episodes of The Honeymooners in The Honeymooners Anniversary Special. That's tomorrow night at 8, right here on Channel 11.